Accessing library computer data. And to make sure history never forgets the name Enterprise. Hey everybody, welcome to the Penske Podcast. You haven't tuned in before, this is a podcast where we are running through all 178 episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation, giving our thoughts and feelings about each and every one. Right now we're up to episode 25 of season 6, the penultimate episode of season 6, Timescape. It was directed by Adam Nimoy of uh, Leonard Nimoy fame, written by Brandon Braga, aired back on June 14th, 1993. In this one, Picard, Troy, LaForge, and Data must save the Enterprise, which they find frozen in an explosion of time, taking weapons fire from an also frozen Romulan warbird. Modi's here to talk about this one, so right after this, me and Modi are going to go deep on Timescape. Let's go through all this again. You were sitting there. The rest of us were here. Describe the exact moment when we appeared to freeze. Well, um... Jordy was talking about what it felt like to touch the plasma field, and you were taking a sip of tea. Did you sense something from any of us at that time, any unusual emotion? Not a thing. I was empathically aware of you right up to the moment when you froze, and, and then it all stopped. <sighs> the last few days have been exhausting. Maybe it was my imagination. <laughs> there were moments in that lecture hall when I thought time was standing still there, too. Oh, there is another possibility, Counselor. This could be nothing more than sim... Oh! oh. You were right, Counselor. What happened? You were motionless for three minutes, 11 seconds. It appears to be the same effect that you described in ours. Do you remember anything? No, one second I was talking to you, and the next you were all standing around me. Wait a second. This is weird. What is it? I had the tricorder run a comparison between the bioscan I took on you earlier and the one I ran just now. In the time between the two scans, you should have aged 23 minutes. But according to your cellular decay levels, you've only aged 20 minutes. How do you account for this discrepancy? I don't know, sir. It's as if for Counselor Troy... For three minutes, time just stopped. Podcast is no longer frozen in time. We're here to talk about Timescape. I'm joined by Modi. How are you, sir? Hello. Welcome. I'm great. Welcome back to the podcast. You've been uh, you've been season he- six heavy, it seems, in these past couple. I of like months. it. Yeah, it's been good. It's been a good stretch of the show. A good stretch for you, I guess. And um, I guess let's just talk about Timescape. I'll, I'll fire this one off by my sort of big, broad, general point here. Um, this is kind of a this is a Brandon Braga episode. It's kind of the curse of Brandon Braga episodes, I think, to a T. And it's a it's a big idea that doesn't quite resolve itself very well. That that's a very like generic thing to say, but I, I, I don't know how to better explain it then. This is an episode that I really love the concept of. And while it doesn't fall apart by the end, it just kind of it kind of loses steam as it goes along, and yeah, I, that's true. What, what, what are your sort of general takes from this guy? It does start out. I don't know. It's it's got this weird kind of sitcommy feel about the start of it somehow. Yeah, and I yeah. kind of like that in a way because it kind of catches you unawares. It lulls you into like thinking this episode's going to be about something that it's not about. Um, with them just kind of talking about nonchalant stuff of, oh, I'm taking care of Data's cat. And oh, let's let's complain about all the professors at this this seminar we went to, and then it kind of just lulls you into this this false sense. And I kind of liked that, but there was also something kind of cheesy about the beginning. I felt like, oh, right. and maybe that just that might just be that might just be TNG in general. So I might, might be wrong about that, but yeah, uh, yeah, was, I don't know. It felt a little like sitcommy somehow, or something like that. Maybe I agree that um, I don't think that the scene where they're talking about the professors or the speakers at that conference was really good. Um, I think it's just because the, the cast isn't written to be really chummy and them trying to have a chummy conversation doesn't really come across really, really well. It's out of character. Yeah. 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 I, I agree with that. And I think that the, um, 
as much as the because the audio drop of Picard doing the he kept talking in one incredibly long unbroken sentence is yeah. that's kind of a famous audio drop. It's it's funny, but um, Troy sort of telling them a story about how she was sort of sexually harassed by a guy at a conference is a is a sort of it it feels very early nineties. While at the same time, it doesn't feel like the show at all would talk <laughs> yeah. about this kind of stuff. Um, and once we get past that, though. I think it moves into the most effective part of the episode is the first probably two acts right. where they start to yeah. re- they start to it starts to get very creepy. It's I this episode always reminds me of a wax museum, just the the frozen, you know, just people frozen in time is a very like creepy creepy concept and yeah. The entire time- and the way they keep panning they keep panning across faces cuz you just know one of those guys is going to move eventually and they keep like faking you out with it. It's going to be this guy, it's going to be this guy and they keep faking you out with it along the way. Yep. Yep. And you know it's going to happen. You're just waiting for it to happen. Yes. And I was also so basically the really great part of this episode to me is when they're on the runabout at the like until the it sort of ends once they no it goes a little bit beyond it, but like once they uh find the Enterprise frozen in time and they board the ship for the first time. Uh, that's probably the peak of the episode for me. And I was watching like the runabout scenes and I kept, they, they, uh, the runabout's interesting. I think it's the first appearance in the show, like the big shuttlecraft basically that has separate rooms. Um, they kept splitting up and going into the different rooms and I kept, oh, yeah. I kept expecting them to come back and someone would be frozen or something like that. It never really happened, mm-hmm. but I think the episode did a really good job of setting up that sort of tense horror aspect to it. Yeah, why would they ever leave each other? I thought that, like somebody would leave the room and come back, and the other guy's like forty years older. Right, like, yeah, that could happen too. You know, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that could. Have, they they're very uh, willing to split up on the on the runabout. But the the first freeze is really really creepy, uh, where Troy is the only one that remains, and then they do that nice smash cut where Troy is talking, and then it cuts. That to was her. really good editing. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, that that's really good. Um, What'd you think of the sort of setup? I guess a little bit of like minor trivia for you is that Brandon Braga wrote this one. He also wrote Cause and Effect. He said that this was his attempt to try to outdo Cause and Effect. What do you think? What do you think about that statement? And what do you think about it in terms of how the episode came across? I think Cause and Effect might be better. Cause and Effect is, is definitely better. I think. Um, yeah. Yeah. But for sure. Go ahead. Explain why you why you'd think that. Um. I don't know this 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 again. It, there, there's something that seemed, uh, if it maybe trying too hard with this one, maybe mm-hmm. I don't know. It didn't didn't quite do it as much for this. Was still a pretty good episode though. I enjoyed this so one. I don't want to take that away. Yeah, this is yeah. actually a pretty decent episode. But yeah, no, I think I like cause and effect better for sure. I I agree. I think this is a I think this is a really strong episode. I think it falls into the. TNG and sort of general story problem of if you have a really cool mystery, like they set this one up with, the solution kind of needs to be equally cool or yeah. or it just falls a little bit flat. And I think that this one, I love everything up to basically their time on the ship the first time back where they're walking through the frozen time because this is basically a mystery story for the first three acts. And once they reveal the answer of what's going on in Act Four, it stops being as interesting to me. It does, and it's another one of those kind of problems that would solve itself if they didn't interfere. It seems like How, I mean the the aliens bound themselves to the warp core. I guess the only difference is that they saved some Romulans along the way. Yep, that's about the only difference that ended up here. Romulans we don't even know about that apparently the the uh, evacuated. Yes, but. Otherwise, had it played out, these guys would have been fine and they would have absorbed the ship or whatever they needed to do. And then they would have continued on. Like the Enterprise didn't help the situation. They only hurt the situation. Yeah, I think the Enterprise Supposedly. caused the timescape as well, right? Like they caused yeah. that, that whole thing. I mean, I, I guess the, the you know, it kind of ties into my when they reveal that the this is being caused by basically aliens in the Romulan warp core or whatever it is that are living there and are uh, reacting poorly to whatever's going on. The It kind of stops making sense at that point because it's like, why were the aliens pretending to be frozen Romulans at that point? You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Why didn't they try to... They can obviously communicate with the other people. Why didn't they just communicate and say... Uh, we have alien. Say what's going on. Yeah, say what's going on. In the thing. It's it's just the the reveal of oh, it's an alien of the week thing. 
I thought was a mistake. I would have stayed away from yeah. aliens doing it and would have come up with some other explanation because I really love the I love the setup of the mystery of, you know, Crusher's getting shot by a Romulan in sickbay. Uh, Riker's mm-hmm. apparently being attacked on the bridge. They're beaming Romulans onto the ship at the same time as they're being attacked by them. It's like, what the hell is going on here? Right. I did like that portion of it, um, that it was all these coincidences that are expl- explained away eventually. Yeah, yeah. But... Uh, yeah, again, again, it's the whole resolution isn't good enough for the the setup. Um, and again, I guess they kind of have done the whole... If it was going to be... I mean, what else could it be, though, besides aliens uh, that are taking... I mean, how do you explain this without aliens taking a human form somehow? Yeah, well, I want... I'm trying to think about that. I wonder if I would have enjoyed it if it was just about them solving more of the mystery of the, of the things that they found on the ship kind of like I, I think you have to make whatever whatever the emergency was that went on the ship would have to have been a little bit more layered like maybe there was a saboteur or something on the Romulan ship mm-hmm. and they would have solved that mystery through going through it it's just I, I don't know I don't know if that would have been exciting enough I guess would be the the thing about it um, you know I, I also think that they they kind of struggle to figure out what the conflict would be because there's really, you know how Picard gets like time sick or temporal sickness or whatever they call it? Right, yeah. There was really no reason to have that happen to anybody. No, it never comes up again. It, it, it's just an opportunity for him to draw a face in a smoke thing. Right, and get a chance to scream and be like, and uh, right. to get spread his wings a little bit, yeah. Uncomfortably laughing. Yeah. Because it doesn't, it doesn't happen to anybody else the rest of the time they're there and he doesn't, it doesn't change their plan in any way because they just go back to the no. ship. And it doesn't really change anything as far as the resolution goes either. As far as like, they, why do they need him out of the way for the story to continue? Ex- they, yeah, they exactly. Really don't. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There's no, there's no, he could I, easily just be if over If there was there. a good reason to have him out of the way, then I could see them, them writing that in, but there's not really. No, no. I mean, and yeah, I don't want to come across as uh, too negative because I really think that this is, it's a great tone, tonal episode. Like it's really creepy. The opening's really creepy. It's a great little mystery for a while. Uh, I love the idea of them wandering around in a sort of frozen time. I love the idea of a warp core breach that is just slowed down to... Uh, slow motion. Yeah, very, warp very core. slow. That's yeah. Cool, yeah, That's a, that's like a, a brilliant idea. And uh, it plays with time effectively. You know, I'm, I'm more intrigued by the time stuff while they're on the runabout than I am with the stuff that they're on the Enterprise with. Um, and the reveal of the Enterprise fr- frozen in in place being attacked by the Romulan chip is really great. Um, yeah, that was a good reveal. And it looked really cool with the, with the, the beam going from one ship and then the lasers come back the other way. Yeah. Did, I kinda, did you, I liked how that looked. Did you remember this episode? I did not actually. I mean, I kind of remembered it when I was playing through, but I didn't remember the resolution for it or anything like that. I didn't remember what was causing it. Uh, there's far too many plots to keep them all yeah. in my head, I think. But <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, what was I, your... I, I, I didn't remember the resolution of it when I was watching it. It wasn't, again, it wasn't as interesting as I could have come up with probably. Sure. What What did you, what was your sort of uh, like emotional state as you were watching it? Was there any point where you, you, you didn't buy in or was the point that you really, you sort of fell into the storyline or anything like that? Yeah, I can usually tell how good an episode is based on when I stopped taking notes on it. Sure. Um, and I usually, I usually got through act one and two. Like just writing down fun notes and that kind of thing, and after that, I was I was I stopped. I started paying attention more to the plot after that, and stopped writing things down after that. Yep. So, but that's also when the the kind of kind of slows down a little bit. So I don't quite know if my system worked so well there. <laughs> um, yeah, this is I um for my notes. This isn't. Uh, it's weird. I, I find like the the more techno babbly ones generally have less notes for me, uh, just because. So much of it is not like so much of it would just be an observation of the plot in in a way, as opposed to any kind of thought that I'm having while I'm watching it. Um, and I feel that this one kind of falls into that one. Like it's, you know, I, my notes are basically like, oh, love the love the old man Picard hand, <laughs> like that kind of thing. Yeah, and uh, you know, love the yeah, runabout. That was a little bit of that kind of stuff going on. Yeah, right. I was writing down uh, stuff about uh, Data's cat. Yep, and yep. Um, that was that. That came back around at the end too. Woo! I mean, like it was it, the ending was again. It was the cold open, and the cold open was pretty good. They 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 did a nice beat at the end there with the the freezing in time and then not explaining it until after the credits. Yeah. But 
uh, the whole stuff leading up to that again felt very sitcommy. Yep. It was it was it was lulling us into a false insecurity. But then, what is the point of the the wrap up at the end, where you have data, const- like back to like a season one kind of data of doing a watch pot never boils trope. Yep. Um, it doesn't. Oh God, that kind of pissed me it off. O- but, it also um, doesn't. It doesn't. I mean, it, it it has the theme of time, but it doesn't really tie into what the episode was about. No. Outside of just time is kind of a concept and data is trying to understand it. Like, it, it, it's, it's, it's again, too it, detached. It, 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 it makes it seem like he's never thought of this before, though. Right. Like, yeah. data's been around for how many seasons now? Again, this is a season one kind of data thing to do. Of I don't understand humans and their, their logic. I mean, the very next episode of this, you have him, like, actually having some better questions about who he is and what that means. Yeah, yeah. Whereas... This is just goes back to like season one of oh you humans are so complex yes um, yeah your your understanding of time pissed me off <laughs> yeah now, it was it off. was a weird uh, it was a weird open and a weird close and I guess I'm sort of surprised by that I don't know if this would be a criticism of the episode but to me it it feels like a lot happens in this episode but for some reason there's also a lot of padding in it which doesn't like the the opening and the close are uh, the opening's a little better. The close is total padding. The P- mm-hmm. Picard getting sick is padding. That that's right. totally unnecessary. Um, to, it just it feels like there's like seven minutes here in a episode that I, <laughs> I feel is is dense. Otherwise, like there's a lot going on be- between the other times where they board the ship and they try to understand the Romulans and they get attacked. I don't know. It's it's kind of weird. It's an odd pacing thing. Yeah, and I don't understand the each alien just grabs the person that is nearest to them and then dies subsequently usually. Yes. Like, like I don't understand like why did, again, why didn't they just spend a little more time like talking with them and they would have figured it out and they would have been resolved without anybody dying probably. And then the But both both of them just grab a guy. Yeah. Just says, was this <laughs> man always got. standing here data? And then uh the <laughs> was pretty at the, oh God, yeah. at the very end the Romulan ship disappears, which I didn't really understand either. Yeah. Right. I think it just ties into like, the the alien resolution here is not as interesting as the the mystery of the time thing is. And and that's a little bit weird. I guess uh would it surprise you to learn that this episode was a rush job because the episode that was supposed to air as the penultimate season six episode got uh, was unable to be pulled together at the last moment, so they had this one uh, waiting. Does that surprise you? That, that would not surprise me, no. Because, like you said, there's a lot of padding. There's a lot of like things that, like, like all of that could have been written at another time and just inserted into this. Like they might have had the stuff ready to go in another script and then just plugged it in. Yeah. Um, and it, there's a lot, there's a little bit of that going on. And then it, it's like, again, it's not thought through. Like there's no reason that Picard can't go to the Romulan ship. Yep. And, unless there's some grand plan that they aren't going to let Picard ever be on a Romulan ship maybe for the series. Right. But I feel like you might've already done that. <laughs> they would have crossed they that. Sent, they sent Troy be like, oh, you were just on. I do like the callbacks to previous episodes though. Yes. For like, oh, you were just on one. You you know this better than anybody because you were you were on one for a while. There's a callback to I do Face like- of the Enemy. And I think there's another one that I can't remember what it would be at that point uh that's too bad but yeah there's definitely a face of the enemy callback um mm-hmm. sorry i interrupted you what were you gonna say no no no. that that's that was pretty much it like it, it's it's but there's no good reason to have picard out of the way is my point no, i guess no there isn't and they if they had more time to write this maybe they would have thought that through more and done something with him actually because again he doesn't seem like he has any decisions to make here for the most part yeah i'm of i'm of two minds about it because the ending certainly feels to me like this was a script that they just needed to come to a conclusion about, and they wrote it that way. The opening feels strong enough to me where I could have been... If someone had told me that this episode also took a year for someone to write, I would have been like, that took a long time, maybe a b- bit too long. But it also, the idea is interesting enough. Like, I think if you had had more time, they could have played up the mystery aspect a little bit more because the problem mm-hmm. with the mystery plotting is you have to think of all the ways of how uh, this is actually going to work out. You know, Riker wouldn't have just fallen right, down. Yeah. There would have been some reason why Riker was on the floor as opposed to he just fell down. Um, but you'd come up with the sort of the moving pieces of that in a really well-written script and just sort of build or, off of it. Or go further with it because they do roll back time at one point. Yes. And so they could have somebody actually just dead there 
and like have have Riker killed somehow and like oh Riker's dead now oh that's true uh, yeah yeah Crusher's about to be dead but then they roll back time so if you get another like five minutes in Riker's life maybe he lives and things go differently yeah so yeah. like they, they didn't they didn't go all the way with it because I don't think they knew quite what they're gonna do while as they're writing it maybe yeah and I think you just like what if they if you played with the time enough where the the you know Picard and the rest of them uh, got a glimpse like you know every few minutes it would shoot forward a couple seconds mm. so you start to get like little hints of maybe what's going on and it changes uh, yeah. the way that they're perceiving things as they're going through the story um but again that's a that's an episode that needs a lot of time to be written because that's very complicated and, and it raises questions about how time works in this universe too maybe yes because that's again you're gonna have to take a lot more time to figure all that out so maybe play a little more safe and do it this way yep rather than go back through all of the 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 rest of the history of of the show and figure out how time actually works before you jump into this one because they they trigger the time with a tricorder right they do something to the aliens and that causes the aliens right to... and then they reverse the delta band to make it go <laughs> people go backwards first yeah of course that's what Which, okay that's what my mechanic yeah, always the tells me about the car flow, right yeah. <laughs> yeah it's i i think it's really just a sort of general there's a difference between a good idea or a great idea and a great story um, and I, I just feel like Timescape is a really great idea that just can't fully flower into a great story. Uh, it's, it's obviously much harder to come up with a great story than it is a great idea. Um, great ideas are sort of, you know, maybe not a dime a dozen, but they're, they're certainly out there that people can grab onto. The story's a little bit harder. Um, I mean, the... It's a, yet another appearance of the Romulans for you, which is kind of odd that this yeah, that this gives a lot of Romulans. As much Romulans as Troy these days, it seems like. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It, it, it's a lot of. There's a couple of faux. Sometimes faux, one of the same. That's, that's right. There's a couple of faux Romulans in this one. Uh, there's a couple of real Romulans. I I think the weakest uh, part of the episode that comes out. I think that the sort of the storyline that they don't resolve satisfactorily is Crusher getting shot, uh, mostly because of the way mm, it's yeah. staged, I think, where he's way too close to... The Romulan's way too close to her. <laughs> right, you're going to fit another person in there? Right, It doesn't yeah. really seem like that'd be... I mean, from across the room, maybe. Yes, yeah, I would have said it from across the room. It doesn't seem... Yeah. Because he... I don't know. When, when they unfreeze time... He is he is literally just point blank shooting her, and it's like, what? what <laughs> it's, oh, there was someone else here. Who would have been there? No one was. A, no one would have been there, Mister Romulan. Yeah. Why would she be sitting like she was, and there'd be somebody like there sitting on her lap? Maybe? <laughs> I, <laughs> like, I don't quite know. <laughs> yeah, they. they I'm looking uh, at the image right now on uh, Alpha Alpha Memory here, and I don't. I can't see how anybody would fit in there. No, no. There's there's no there's certainly no room for that. He's also he doesn't have the appropriate. Uh, pistol action with his with his hand there as he's shooting. No, he's like it's premeditated. Yep. Like he walked in and was like holding the place hostage, and she tried to make a move. It's a and then uh, he bless her. It's a surprisingly uh, low stakes for the Romulans on the ship kind of thing, which is which I appreciate. I don't think it's necessary for them to be Romulan problems, but the the Romulans are really just kind of walking all over the ship at this point, which is yeah. which is interesting. A lot of trust there. A lot of trust. We've come a long way, guys. They they have weapons like, too. They're cool with it too. Yeah. Like they're not like yeah, let them have weapons. Uh they can have free roam of the ship. Uh and everyone's going to be cool about this. It's like they don't even care about asking for help. No. <laughs> like normally like they're really shitty about, you know, we don't, we're not going to take help from you or something like that. Like they're not going to like if if the federation shows up to help them, they're probably not going to take it. You know what I mean? Right. Yep. Like, they are they are loners. They're they're, they're uh, a loner race of of uh, wily wily whatever the hell the Romulans are is what. Uh, what, what are they Jesus doing? Says. What are they doing in? Are they in the neutral zone? Like what? What are they doing here? Also, I got like, the impression why, why would they weren't. Yeah. Is that what you yeah, thought, or did you? Like, no, I, I was just thinking like that just crossed my mind just now. I was like, where? Why would first of all, why would the federation ship be close enough to the neutral zone? to do anything and then secondly why would these guys be in the neutral zone and i don't know just a lot of questions but what normally would be addressed within the episode aren't yeah and at the end they say that they're bringing them back uh and they're taking them to the neutral zone so like that they i don't know they floated out time time shifted quickly yeah, they, they floated out yeah i don't um it's tough i i, I don't want to sound overly negative about this one either i i, I enjoy yeah, i think this is a pretty high score actually. It's, a, it's a very watchable episode it's um yeah it's just such a really fantastic concept, I think. But I think we've we sort of broken down what we think about it. So we're going to take a little audio break. I'm going to play a clip. We're going to come back and give our final thoughts and ratings for Timescape. I believe my tricorder emissions caused the temporal aperture to activate. 
I suggest we avoid exposing it to any further energy emissions. When time resumed, did you observe any activity in the engine room that might suggest what the Romulans were doing? They may have been attempting to eject their engine core. I thought I heard one of the engineers say something about a power transfer. Something about an energy feedback? Yes, Captain. It looks to me like they were trying to stop whatever was happening here. Mr. LaForge, from where you are, can you determine what is happening on the Romulan bridge? I think so, Captain. Wait. Something's not right here. Did it was this man always standing right here? <laughs> He's in neural shock. We must get him to the runabout. There isn't time. He's dying. <laughs> At least this way he'll be alive in the other time frame. We might have a chance to save him later. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't want to come across as too negative for this one. I, I don't think I uh, did there. I think this is a super watchable episode that is... Mm -hmm. You know, if you if you want your Star Trek to be more sci-fi, the side of sci-fi as opposed to character stuff, I think this is a really good episode for that kind of person. Yeah, I can see that. I, I think the what I think it what I think it boils down to is that it might be a good episode of television, but not a good episode of Star Trek. Is that fair? Uh, let's see. I I mean I I I think I half agreed with that as you were saying, and then then by the end I kind of disagreed with it. I think it's. Let's see. Is it a good... I think it's a good episode of television. I wonder if it's right for this show, maybe. As opposed to... as opposed to, uh, Do you mean Star Trek The Next Generation, or do you mean Star Trek I mean, as maybe a... Maybe not just a, not a good TNG episode, maybe. I think, is what I'm thinking. yeah, I think it's not a good TNG episode. Maybe Like, it's not built for this yeah. cast, I think. Um, yeah. Well, this, could, this is the kind of story that could work with any of them, though. You just you just change some names and change some races and then you're refined again. Yes. So and I, I think you could you could change the characters in this story. You know, it could it could be uh -huh. Crusher, Troy, and Riker as the ones who come back. You know, uh, who aren't frozen in time. Yeah. There's, yeah, I can see that too. There's really no reason. I mean, Data is always useful to have around just because he can tell you everything. But outside of that, there's really. There was really no. Uh, you could have interchanged any of the characters and kept it going. I mean, I like the I like the sci-fi aspect of it. It's really good, and I I enjoyed you know watching it. I think the first half of the episode is really really strong. It kind of it kind of meanders after that. But uh, anyway, how about you give your final thoughts and ratings for on our one to five scale? And if you guys are on YouTube, you can click the poll function and uh, vote along with us to let us know what you thought. I think I will give this one a light four, actually. Okay. Uh, a tentative four maybe um i mean it is like you said it's a super watchable episode and that goes a long way with me um like i said it might not just not be a, the right fit for the show at the time at the time it's on again it feels like a season one episode if this was, if this was a season one episode it would be amazing e but yeah it's not right and, uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> this it does feel um i've watched a couple of the early season uh, episodes and the the early season definitely depended more on the sci-fi concepts of what they were trying right. to do and you, like I kind of well I kind of agree and I kind of disagree because if they did this in the first season it would have been terrible just because it would have been in the first season but the well, that's true the too. concept would have felt much more of a first season episode in yeah. a lot of ways because it's that could be it there's really nothing going on outside of the plot it's not like cause and effect which is interesting like in terms of how the episode is constructed, this one doesn't have that kind of thing going for it. Um, it's much more, it's much simpler. Anyway. I, yeah, much more straightforward, right? I agree with you. I think it's a four. Um, it's, I think it's a, one of the, you know, it's a really, really solid sci-fi episode that is eminently rewatchable. Re and it's just, um, I really love the opening two acts. I love everything on the ship. I love the wax museum horror aspect of it. It's, <laughs> it's a really eerie kind of episode. Uh, very frightening when Troy turns the corner and she bumps into the crewman who's just stuck there in, in time. It's like, it is freaky. Um, and it's probably one of the episodes, like I was thinking, if I was in the situation, it would be the most terrifying situation. Um, you know, because everything else seems a little bit too, like the Borg aren't particularly scary if I imagine myself beamed into this universe in like a Borg episode. But 
walking around frozen people uh, seems kind of terrifying. Yeah, it is a little creepy. Yeah. They could have played that up a little bit more too, maybe. Yeah. But yeah. Or if, if it was the serialized thing, you know, you'd you'd the characters would find other people in some sort of um, compromising situation or something, right? Ah, uh, yes. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, that's how, that's how you'd build the story arcs. <laughs> It'd be tough. Anyway, yeah, I think it's a sol- I think it's a I think it's a four. I, I enjoyed the watching this one. It's uh season six is wrapping up pretty strongly. Uh the second half has been very, very strong. If you guys are on uh YouTube and you enjoy the content today, like in the comments, appreciate it. If you're on iTunes rating review, helps get the show out there. You can go to patreon.com slash the Penske Podcast. A couple bucks to get you exclusive content. We just did Event Horizon, the nineteen ninety seven horror sci fi movie. Um, outside of that, go to facebook.com slash Spensky podcast, all that stuff, hit up all those sites, whatever. Thank you guys very much for listening. Modi, thanks for coming on again. No problem. Anytime you've been, uh, you've been powering through season six with us and, uh, you're going to be here for the season six finale because you'll be back with descent part one. Can't wait. Yes. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed season six. It's been a blast. Me and Modi are going to be back shortly with descent part one. See ya.